lifetime cows do we cull or do we cure? That's the key question. Uh, it's absolutely essential that we deal with these high cell count cows and there's two reasons for that. The first is that the scientific fact that if you have a high cell count cow in your herd and she's milking, in the milking parlour she will infect the next up to eight cows afterwards through that cluster. So if we're spending all this time developing new heifers and effort into high EBI and still we expose them to this infection from this high cell count cow in the milking parlour. It, it makes no sense. The second reason for identifying the high cell count cow is that she helps to identify, I suppose, what the type of bacteria is and helps to identify where the original problem comes from. So in identifying them you have to use a number of techniques, primarily the uh, ICBF uh, cell check report will point out what area the problem is, whether the, it's new infected animals, and in particular the mastitis incident report picks out the worst cows affected, the top cows in the herd. So we like to look at those cows and uh, we, we'd see their history, uh, had, had a high cell count for some time, and we'd usually use those for sampling purposes. In other words, we'd uh, clean and disinfect the teeth and take a sterile sample and culture them. And that'll give us valuable information. In particular, it might identify whether it's, it's you know, contagious mastitis or whether it's, um, if you like, an environmental mastitis. Modern research has shown uh, that the lines are not as clear as they were and the Staph aureus can behave both as a contagious bug but also spread from the environment and similarly with the Strep uberus and E. coli they can spread both in the milking parlour and in the uh, environment as well. So having identified them uh, we would then go to work and see how we can deal with them. Now the first obvious thing to do is why not dry them off? This uh, helps to reduce them from causing infection to the herd. It may be even possible to dry them off early, if she's another three or four months to go to calf, just get them out of the herd and let the dry period deal with them. The second thing you can do is to dry that quarter off, and that's possible to do. However, don't uh, put dry cow antibiotic in or teat sealer, just stop milking that quarter. You can obviously identify the quarter with the California milk test, but then at the dry period she can be dealt with effectively. The third and probably most interesting way of dealing with the high cell count cows is to segregate them. So by doing that then you take that bundle of high cell count cows and make them last in the herd. Uh, this can work both at uh, housing time or indeed at grazing time where they can be segregated and come in last. Obviously they'll make last because the machine is going to be effectively cleaned before the next milking. So in this way you're not exposing your high cell count cows uh, and the milk they produce and the contamination around uh, to, the, to the young heifers. You're protecting the young heifers. So in summary, uh, identifying the high cell count cows is important and reducing the possibility that they can spread infection and using the dry period in particular to get an effective treatment going to reduce their cell counts over that dry period. A key tool to use in identifying the high cell count cows is to use the milk recording through ICBF. In addition to giving you the list of high cell count cows which you intend to manage, it also gives you trends in the herd. You know, are, is it the heifers or second calvers that are affected? Uh, what stage of lactation is the higher level of infection? And indeed, you know, how to manage these individual groups. One bone of contention I have currently is that farmers uh, are reducing the frequency of milk recording. So instead of doing it every month, they're doing it maybe every two or three months. And they're losing valuable information here, particularly with regards to the early lactation, where they can really assess the effectiveness of the dry cow therapy. Martin Green has shown uh, that new infections that happen in the first 100 days of lactation, be they clinical or subclinical, do relate back to the dry cow period and the effectiveness of what happens at the dry cow period in terms of the medicines used, but also in terms of how we manage them hygienically wise and so on. 